Hello everybody and welcome to our new video Biomechanics of Temporomandibular Joint. TMJ is a ganglionoarthroidal joint. Ganglionoid means as it provides hinging movement and arthroidal as it provides gliding movement. Hinging is in the distal articulating structure and gliding is in proximal articulating structure. TMJ is classified as compound joint due to the presence of articular disc which acts as a non-ossified third bone of articulation. The proximal articulating bone is temporal bone, which is a large bone forming part of the lateral wall of the cranium. Its inferior surface provides the rostral articulation surfaces of the TMJ. The articular eminence forms the anterior limit of the mandibular fossa. A styloid process lies slightly posterior to the mandibular fossa projecting inferiorly from inferior surface of the temporal bone. Laterally, the temporal bone provides a large relatively flat surface which together with the lateral aspect of the sphenoid constitutes the temporal fossa. The mandibular fossa is oriented at 70 degree from the horizontal plane. The large prominent mastoid process lies posterior and lateral to the styloid process. The facial nerve exits the skull at the stylomastoid foramen that lies, lies between mastoid and styloid process. The distal articulating surface is the mandible. Each mandibular ramus ends superiorly in two processes. The condyles of the mandible are shaped like football cuts in half that tilt anteriorly and medially towards each other. The condyle is convex with projections called medial and lateral poles. Now comes the most important structure, the articular disc or meniscus that separates the joint into superior joint space between the disc and the articular eminence and inferior joint space between the disc and the mandibular head. The articular disc is concave superiorly to conform to the articular eminence of the temporal bone and concave inferiorly to mold to the convex mandibular head. The disc has more fibrous tissues which has more adherence to the mandible. The disc is thickest peripherally and thinnest at the center. If the normal anatomical alignment of the joint surface is altered, the disc can be toned or perforated as forces compress the thin center of the disc. The disc continues posteriorly as two layers of loose fibrous tissue, a fibroelastic layer that attaches to the posterior aspect of the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and an inferior inelastic layer that attaches to the condyle of the mandible. This bilaminar region is highly vascular and rich in nerve endings and fuses with the articular capsule posteriorly as the retrodiscal pad. The central portion of the disc is avascular, an indication of its stress-bearing role in TMJ function. Now let us come on to the ligaments. The primary ligament reinforcing the TM joint 
is the lateral ligament that is made of horizontal and oblique fibers. The oblique fibers course in entero superior direction from posterior neck of the mandible to the lateral margins of the articular eminence and zygomatic arch. The deeper horizontal fibers courses horizontally and posteriorly to attach on the lateral pole of the mandibular condyle. Accessory ligaments are stylomandibular and sphenomandibular ligaments. Both the ligaments lie medial to the joint capsule. Sphenomandibular ligament has its attachment on the medial side of the disc. Though these ligaments have some stabilizing role, but they do not have a profound role in the function of the temporomandibular joint. Now the arthrokinematics. The movement of the TMJ involves bilateral action of both the joints. Abnormal function of one would interfere with the other one as well. Now the principles of arthrokinematic motion suggest during rotational motion, the mandibular condyle rotates with respect to the inferior surface of the articular disc. During translational motion, the mandibular condyle moves with each other. This is also known as condyle disc complex translation. Protrusion and Retrusion During protrusion and retrusion, the condyle disc complex translates anterior and posterior respectively relative to the fossa. The condyle and disc follows the downward slope of the articular eminence. Mandible slides slightly downwards during mouth opening and upwards during mouth closing. Lateral excursion. Slight multiplanar rotations are always accompanied by side to side translation of the TMJ. The left condyle forms the pivot point when the right condyle rotates anteriorly and medially. Elevation and depression. These are the movements incorporated in mouth opening and closing. Rotation and translation are the movements incorporated during elevation and depression between mandibular condyle, fossa, and disc. Since the rotation and translation occur simultaneously, the axis of rotation is constantly moving. Arthrokinematics can be divided into early phase and the late phase. The early phase constitutes of 35-50% to 50 of the total range of motion, involves primarily rotation of the mandible with respect to the cranium. The condyle rolls posteriorly within the concave inferior surface of the disc. The rolling motion swings the mandible inferiorly and posteriorly. This rolling motion stretches the oblique fibers of the lateral ligament and initiates the late phase of mouth opening. The late phase comprises of last 50% to 65% of mouth opening where translation of the condyle takes place. During this, the condyle slides inferiorly and forward along the articular eminence. At the end of mouth opening, the axis of rotation shifts inferiorly. Full mouth opening stretches and pulls the disc inferiorly and anteriorly. Here you can see the physiological motion that is occurring at the articular surfaces during elevation and depression of the temporomandibular joint.
muscular control of mouth opening. The opening of mouth is primarily initiated by contraction of inferior head of the lateral pterygoid and suprahyoid group of muscles. As the mouth opens, the inferior head of lateral pterygoid contracts to translate the mandibular condyle forward. Its force couple with suprahyoid rotates the condyle along with its axis of rotation. The condyle and disc moves forward as one unit and the disc is pulled inferiorly and anteriorly by collateral ligaments attached to the condyle. Increased articular pressure created by activation of inferior head of the lateral head of pterygoid. Now the muscular control of mouth closing. Mouth closing is primarily performed by masseter, medial pterygoid and temporalis muscle. All these muscles have a favorable momentum for this action. The oblique fibers of the temporalis muscle is also responsible for the retraction of mandible which directs mandible posteriorly and superiorly. The superior head of lateral pterygoid muscle is activated eccentrically during mouth closing and works to balance the retrusion force of the temporalis muscle. is the muscle action during mouth opening and closing. 